Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, hope you're having a wonderful day, thank you for joining me on today's video. We're learning about the C-17 Globemaster transport aircraft. Now I have had a personal run in with this aircraft before and I must say I'm absolutely fascinated and love this aircraft. It has transported me before and I'm going to show you some footage of uh, me actually taking part in a air show and some of my own personal experiences with me actually seeing this aircraft up front and then we're going to take a look at the aircraft overall and do a bit of an overview of it. So let's take a look what I had involved when I was at the air show looking at this incredible piece of aircraft and aviation technology. This is what happens when you come to a air show where it's a lightning strike. Everybody uses a C-17 as a rain cover and I'm stood here with pizza and coke in the middle of a lightning storm on an airfield on a runway. Totally safe, totally legit. So I'm going to join them at the C-17 and hopefully not get hit by lightning. Guy cleaning the windscreen there, which I thought was hilarious, uh, waving to everyone as he did. The US Air Force brought two of them, as I mentioned, from Strategic Command. Uh, they looked incredible, big old beast. And again, the flight capacity of these things is just incredible. The amount of power that must be produced to get these things off the ground. I've actually flown in one of these aircraft before. Fantastic bit of kit. Uh, took me to Afghanistan and uh, the sound that they make when you actually take off is just puts hairs on the back of your neck. And something that put the hairs on the back of my neck was seeing the Canadian C-17 actually doing a flyby. Just incredible. So the landing you're about to see here is actually what they call their combat landing. So it's basically they're going to try and slow the aircraft down as quickly as possible in the shortest amount of runway as possible by using their reverse thrusters. And my goodness, does it know how to stop on a dime. Considering the size of this aircraft, it slows down extremely quickly, which just shocked me. I just didn't think it would take that short of a time for it to actually slow down and stop. Once she had landed, for some reason, two sports cars decided to go tearing down the middle of the runway. Yes, they had permission, but it was kind of cringy. You know, it's those exotic car companies who want to make a million dollars out of sending people down a runway at 150 miles an hour. So then we had the privilege of seeing the beautiful Canadian C-17 rolling right towards the crowd with the Canadian flag flying out the top. Honestly, this was a really proud moment for me seeing that beautiful flag peering out the top of this aircraft and knowing that it is serving our nation and proud to serve our nation. Talking to some of the air crew of this aircraft, they are extremely happy with the performance, the capability, and just being a part of the C-17 program in general. Very proud crew, very uh, confident crew of the aircraft, and you can see why. I mean, when you crawl around this thing and look at it, and how well it's produced and built, it really does go to show how well the C-17s have actually done in their service career. Uh, I don't know the full technical history of these aircraft. I'm probably going to do some research after I make this video. But I was having a blast watching it roll up towards us, and the rest of the crowd was too. And it was just a beast. Seeing it come up this close with those engines roaring, just incredible. And uh, I hope you guys appreciate the fact that, you know, at the end of the day, the men and women that serve on these aircraft work extremely hard to maintain them and keep them going. And I myself, coming from a mechanical background in the military, uh, making sure that things work. I can't even imagine trying to be the crew of an aircraft of this size. 
and the amount of effort and time it must take to make sure these things fly. And really though, it was just an incredible sight to see. So there you have it folks, the C-17 and my experiences with it, such an incredible aircraft to see up close and personal. So let's talk about an overview and a little bit of a history of this aircraft. The C-17 is a high-wing, four-engine, T-tail military transport aircraft capable of carrying large amounts of equipment, supplies and troops directly to small airfields in very harsh terrain anywhere in the world, day or night. This incredibly massive, sturdy, long-haul aircraft tackles distance, destination and heavy, oversized payloads in unpredictable conditions every single day. It is definitely a workhorse of air forces around the world. It has delivered cargo in just about every worldwide operation since the 1990s. The basic design of the C-17 is derived from the YC-15, a four-engine cargo jet experimental aircraft that the McDonald's Douglas Corporation developed in the late 1970s as a proposal to meet the United States Air Force requirement for an advanced medium STOL transport project that sought for a replacement for the lighter Lockheed C-130 tactical transport aircraft, which, if you haven't checked already, I've already made a video on. In 1979, the Defense Department started the Cargo Experimental Program, as the Air Force was looking for a large air mobility platform with in-fight refueling capabilities for global reach missions. McDonnell Douglas won the contract in 1981 with its proposal to build the C-17. The AMST program was eventually cancelled, but the YC-15 formed the basis for McDonnell Douglas's proposal for the United States Air Force CX program, looking for a replacement for the larger Lockheed C-141 Starlifter cargo jet. The C-17 actually won the CX contest. It made its maiden flight in 1991 and proved to be a very capable airlifter from the beginning. During flight testing, 33 world records were actually set with this aircraft, more than any other airlifter in history. Now NASA actually played a huge role in the development of the C-17, contributing research and technology that had been made available to the industry of over four decades. The powered lift development by researchers at NASA Langley Research Center in the mid-1950s gave the aircraft close to double the lift coefficient of a conventional transport airframe by positioning the engines and flaps in the way that directed the exhaust downward. The development of this technology gave the C-17 the short takeoff and landing capabilities, allowing it to take off and land on runways as short as 3,500 feet and with only 90 feet wide. The aircraft is also astonishingly able to turn around on its own on these narrow runways using a three-point star turn and its reverse capability. The supercritical wing, winglets, fly-by-wire system, engine performance enhancements and composite materials used throughout the aircraft were all developed in partnership with NASA. The C-17 made its maiden flight on September 15th, 1991. The United States Air Force declared the first C-17 squadron operational in January 1995. During its first years of service, the aircraft quickly established a very impressive track record. It has supported successfully many numerous military, peacekeeping and humanitarian operations all around the world, first flying missions for the United States Air Force and later expanding to a community of international users. In 1997, McDonnell Douglas was merged with Boeing Company, with the C-17 redesignated as the Boeing C-17 Globemaster III. The Air Force's final C-17 was completed by Boeing in September 2013 and delivered to JB Charleston completing a 20-year run of production. On December 10, 2010, the worldwide C-17 fleet surpassed 2 million flight hours milestone and recently surpassed the 2.6 million flight hours. Of the 33 world records that the C-17 set, it was more than any other airlifter in history, including payload to altitude, time to climb, and short takeoff and landing marks, in which the C-17 took off in less than 1,400 feet, or 426 meters, and carried a payload of 44,000 pounds, or 19,958 kilograms, to an altitude and landed in less than 1,400 feet, or 426 meters. That is an incredible feat considering what this thing is and what it is hauling. The C-17's incredible ability to fly long distances and land in remote airfields in rough, landlocked regions make it a premier transport for military, humanitarian and peacekeeping missions. 
In terms of some of its other capabilities, it can take off from a 7,600 feet or 2,300 meter carried airfield with a payload of 160,000 pounds or 72,500 kilograms and fly 2,400 nautical miles or 4,444 kilometers, refuel while in flight and land in a 3,000 feet or 914 meter or less on a small unpaved or paved airfield in day or night capabilities. This is an incredible feat to the fact that this thing can haul things just about anywhere and do it in such small, tight conditions. It can also carry a cargo of wheeled US Army vehicles in side-by-side -side rows or singular, including the US Army's main battle tank, the M1 Abrams, and three Bradley infantry fighting vehicles comprising of one load. It can also drop a single 60,000 pound or 27,215 kilogram payload with sequential load drops of 110,000 pounds or 49,895 kilograms. Incredibly, this aircraft, even when fully loaded, can reverse back up a hill of 2% gradient slope. Considering its weight and its size, that is an incredible feat of engineering design. It can also seat 54 troops on the sidewalls and 48 on the centerline, making a huge capacity for airborne troops. It has a two-person cockpit crew and one loadmaster which operates the aircraft, which can be refueled in flight. This cost-effective flight crew complement is made possible through the use of advanced digital avionics systems and advanced cargo systems. For instance, the aircrafts of today still have the standardized avionics equipment inside of them, but upgraded capabilities are given such as the heads-up display and more automated systems. None of the incredible feats that this aircraft can perform would be possible without the huge four-powered engines on its wings. The four engines are Pratt & Whitney PW2040 series turbofans, designated as the F117 PW100 by the Air Force, each producing 40,400 pounds of thrust. That is an incredible amount of power to put behind just one engine, let alone four. The engines are equipped with directed flow thrust reversers capable of deployment in flight. On the ground, a fully loaded aircraft using the thrust reversers can back up that 2% slope, and now you can see why. The wings of the C-17 follow a hypercritical design that includes an externally blown flap system which is extremely strong. The system uses the engine exhaust that is directed to the flaps to create an accelerated airflow that reduces the landing speed and hence the landing distances. The engine thrust not only enables the C-17 to reach a cruise speed of just over 0.74 Mach, or 906 km an hour, but also allows the aircraft to fly very, very slowly, which allows it to not only drop troops from the aircraft, but large amounts of cargo. Today's modern F-117 engines increase the capacity with the Reduced Temperature Configuration, or RTC, which uses technical and material advancements such as second-generation single-crystal turbine materials, improved cooling management and thermal barrier coatings to lower the operating temperatures. These enhancements contribute towards the F-117's excellent reliability, durability and long time on wing. A full authority digital electronic control unit or FADEC with greater capacity delivers higher operational performance, lower fuel burn and improved maintenance diagnostics. The C-17 offers its crew a very modern work environment with systems that significantly reduce the workload of operating such a complex aircraft. An essential part of them is the cockpit avionics suite that displays flight and systems information on four multi-function active matrix crystal displays and two heads-up displays for the pilots. This shows essential flight information and anything else that attributes to its flight. The aircraft avionics permit the pilots to execute airdrop to precise ground locations and including aerial refueling which is a lot easier to do with a heads up display. The aircraft avionics permit the pilots to execute airdrops to a precise ground location. The information on parachute ballistics, weather and various other parameters are fed directly into the navigation computer for guidance to the exact release points, which increases its overall accuracy at dropping things where it needs to be. The aircraft is mainly controlled through an electronic flight control system that converts pilot inputs towards the movements of the wing and the tail control services, but it is backed up by a mechanical system though in case of technical failures. 
When there is a need to operate in an environment with extreme low levels of light, the crew can use the integrated night vision goggles for the aircraft that will enable them to actually see the conditions approaching in total darkness. Interestingly, some of these aircraft can also be rigged for nuclear capabilities, which what I mean by that is that if their nuclear weapons did go off in the vicinity, that the flash from the blast would not actually be seen by the pilots. Specific screens can be pulled across the windows of the cockpit to stop them from getting blinded. These are quite common in most aircraft nowadays, especially in the tactical sense, but for the airlifters it seemed a lot more critical for the fact that they could be carrying payloads of close to hundreds of men at any one time, and the loss of one aircraft could be a loss of an entire battle group almost of airborne troops. Therefore it's imperative that these aircraft can continue flying even if they're engaged by certain deterrents such as nuclear weapons at distance. Surprisingly, for an aircraft that really can't defend itself much, it has quite a countermeasure technology placed upon it. The ANAAR-47 has a suite of surface-mounted thermal sensors around the aircraft which detect the thermal signature of the missile exhaust plume if being engaged. Frequency selection and signal processing techniques are used to minimise the false alarm rate. The system provides a warning to the crew via a cockpit indicator unit of the presence of direction of the missile. A threat is normally a signal automatically sent to the ALE-47 dispensers. The ANLE-47 is capable of carrying a mix of expendable countermeasures including jammers, chafe and flares. The system's interfaces on the C-17 aircraft sensors are basically selected straight through the aircrew select mode, which can also be done fully automatically though and the aircraft will pretty much take over, reducing the amount of work that the pilots have to take part in. So there we have it everyone, the C-17 Glowmaster, what an incredible piece of engineering to say the least. I must admit, being that I have flew on this aircraft, been around it, it is awe-inspiring knowing what it can do and the amount of power behind the aircraft itself, but also the power behind its capabilities. You know, it's not about always putting troops on the ground, it's about providing things like humanitarian aid and the amount of resources and supplies this thing can drop in such really tough areas and conditions is incredible. And I want to do a massive respect and shout out for those who serve on these aircraft. Truly, you are doing everyone around the world a huge um, service in providing support to whether it be military forces, a humanitarian or any other kind of uh, support that you give. These aircraft really are changing the world uh, one flight at a time, even if it's you know just dropping off some water in a, in a war-torn country. It's pretty impressive what they can do. Uh, so I appreciate everyone who does serve on these aircraft and thank you for those who have. Uh, you know when I spoke to the Canadian air crew at the air show there back some time ago, uh, they had nothing but pride for the aircraft and what it could do and its capabilities. So I think uh, it's true to say that you know people who serve on the aircraft are very very proud of it and uh, really enjoy what they do and why not i mean what oh, just an incredible piece of aircraft and aviation thank you everyone for joining me today i really do appreciate you stopping by my channel really is getting hit pretty hard right now of course uh, you know youtube's doing some really silly things lately and i think a lot of you uh, you know have uh, also been hitting some really tough times this is a big shout out to all of you as well during this uh, really challenging moment in our history uh, to look out for yourselves look out for one another uh, make sure you uh, take care of yourself during these really tough times uh, you're more than welcome to come reach out to me and have a chat if you wish to and i hope you all have a wonderful day please feel free to subscribe to the channel and uh, click the little bell uh, button by the subscribe button if you want to be notified of any upcoming content in the future you can also check out the various links in the description box below including my patreon and paypal and thank you to everyone who's been contributing towards there i really do appreciate it it helps out the channel a lot and i hope you all take care see you on the next video everyone Bye bye